you're kind of you're kind of getting to sort of the essence of these types of negotiations, which is that you're not trying to bend the guy over a barrel. You're trying to get him a good deal. You're trying to get a good deal for yourself, and then you'll both do better in the future because you have this relationship. And it was just awesome just to see that these people care enough about other people to give up their time to come in and teach women that a lot of people in society have written off. I've spent a lot of my life in places like this and because of my record and the gaps in my job history, I've come to believe that the only way I'm going to really achieve any meaningful level of success is to open my own business. What started as a letter requesting advice about a business plan is now a successful UVA program offered to incarcerated but soon to be released men and women in our community. Join us as we visit with Greg and Tierney Fairchild to learn about the Darden Prisoner Reentry Education Program. Come on. You're realizing that you're going to be in the room with people who have done the range of things you might have seen on the news. There are no individuals that have gang affiliations, and there are no individuals that are sex offenders. Uh, but we have had people that are violent offenders, and including murder. We also, last year, had um, a student who was removed from the program, in part because he was not being respectful of the education coordination people. So Greg, what inspired you to start the program? It all started with a letter we got from a man at the Darden School who was making a transition and he knew that he was upcoming and he really wanted an opportunity to get some education that would help him find a way that he could create an entity that would hire someone like himself. And the idea was simple. We would begin to do education with people that were currently incarcerated, returning citizens, and we would talk with them about ways that they could take their skills into creating a firm that, yes, would employ themselves. So entrepreneurship. Talk about the program that it has become. Well, I would say that, um, you know, I came on about a year in after hearing, you know, his stories about these incredible students um, and what they were discussing in class. And, you know, we're both graduates of the Darden School and the Socratic method uh, is something that we really enjoy, that case method, um, where you get a problem that's based in a narrative of somebody real that is solving a business problem. And so what we believe is that we're not just teaching entrepreneurship, and wow. now we have added financial capability and a foundations and business course. We have three courses for our entrepreneurial reentry program. And these are all taking place in two different prisons in the, in the area. Yes. Dillwyn Correctional Center and the Fluvanna Women's Correctional Center? That's correct. That's correct. So let's, let's back up. If, if an inmate wants to participate, how does that happen? So they have to be within three years, 36 months, of being released because that's when this type of content, this type of information is most useful. They might have taken a certificate in cosmetology. Mm -hmm. They might uh, be learning how to, be, how to do auto repair. They might learn welding. All of these, if you think about them, lend themselves to running your own small business. Additionally, we look for things like whether they've completed at least a GED. Right. And we look yeah. for things like whether they have a s certain type of facility with math. So what we want is if you can kind of do algebra, uh, we can kind of work with you. I never seen myself in this kind of in this kind of realm. And now that I'm here, you know, I excelled in math, but I never developed the mindset of how to figure up accumulated interest. And taking this course here has given me that knowledge of how to figure up accumulated interest, which is a very beneficial tool to know how to do when you generate your own business. I didn't really know how to transition from an idea to to make the plan function, to make it, you know, breathe. Never thought that, I figured, you know, okay, if I'm selling it for more than I'm buying it, then I gotta be making money, right? But then there are all kinds of other things that I hadn't considered before. And so now with these tools, in addition to what I already had, I'm really confident and really excited about you know, what's getting ready to happen when I go home in two years. So have you, got, have you guys come to an, uh, an agreement or are you still? When the program started, you were in there, you were teaching. 
but now Darden students are teaching. Talk about that transition. Well, now that we have so many students, we have them in self-managed teams of seven. And, but they go in and they prepare, they manage the teaching schedule, they get their training, they get clearance to go in, they work together throughout the year, they grade, uh, and, and they are the face of our program. And we really didn't realize, uh, Terry, what, what I think has been a really important secondary benefit is not only are we actually helping these people who are returning citizens, right. and we're helping them not just with in entrepreneurship, but also just with their confidence in getting jobs and employment. Right. But we're also affecting the minds and lives of these MBA students who are our future business leaders. Right. And when they think about mm -hmm. what is going on with this issue of mass incarceration and how are we underemploying potential people who could be incredible contributors to right. society. But another aspect of what Tierney said is they're going to lead people in their organizations. Your ability to explain a complicated concept to someone who's never learned it is a big part of how you succeed in business. So would you wanna would you wanna do business with him again? <laughs> <laughs> I probably wouldn't do business with him. I'd probably tell my tell my boss to handle this contract next time. Yeah. But if he has another employee who's willing to represent him, then I'll give him a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, what do you think? I'd do this with me, man. I think it'd be good. Oh, yeah, I bet you would. <laughs> <laughs> with my uncle, who's been in and out of jail since the late 90s, had he had some skills that could have helped him get a job when he got out, start his own business, seem more professional even, like just like little things, I think would have gone a long way to help him out. Growing up, my grandma would always tell me, you know, to who much is given, much is expected. And so for me, I think the cards are stacked against a lot of people, and so this is my way of trying to undo that a little bit. He's the what? GM. What's that mean? General manager. What's general manager do? Daily operations. All right, so now, let's, now that we have kind of a framework of what this company is about, somebody walk me through what exactly is going on. Talk about the benefits of the program to the prisoners. I got a letter after the first year about one of the men we were working with, and he had a counselor. And the counselor wrote me a letter and said, Archie is dreaming again. And had said that the experience in the class had changed his outlook from one where uh, life is defined for me to one where I can have a role in defining my life. We had a, you know, a woman go through all three of our programs she had a very smart business plan, but she wasn't very good and confident in her presentation. Well, by the second and then the third class, she, was t she would come back in and tell the other students, here's what you need to do, uh -huh. here's what I learned, and here is how I have changed my presence and my outlook because I am now more confident in my ability to go back to my community and to be able to do not only this business if I choose to, but any job. Right. Happened. And during the program, obviously, they come up with a plan. They have an idea for a business, and they work that through. What happens at the end? The person says, hey, I completed the program in cosmetology. I completed the program in carpentry. But I also have a major business school certificate of completion. And these two things, we think, say something different yeah. to an employer who might wonder about whether the person has really made the change they claim. At first I didn't want to sign up for the Darden program, and I'm, I'm so, so glad I did. What they give to everybody they work with is their all. There's no corners cut. And what they taught me, I, I can't even begin to put a value on that. You're getting taught by these MBA students, but you're also learning from everybody's experience in the room. The case studies, they help me take my common sense and then they give business principles to it. And it's like, oh, okay, now I can communicate with people that are actually in business about things that I found out I already knew in some cases. And All right, you guys ready to get I back think together? it's a wonderful thing. I'm really Stepping happy to be a part done? of it. So ex explain to us why, how you guys came to that deal and, and why you think it was good. Well, I figured uh, mm -hmm. I would lower the price in order to keep them locked in for the next three years. Then we can negotiate another deal. How many of the graduates 
who are back in the community are, are running businesses or do you have a track record for that? First of all, yes, our goal is that people will have either a business or a job. Number of our, we know anecdotally um, that a number of our students leave and they go back for continuing education. We've had people that have gotten into VCU, to William and Mary, to mm -hmm. other schools, one at ODU. So we know that people are going to community colleges and finishing that part of their education. Um, we know that people have asked us for reference letters. Uh, and we do know that uh, some of our, the returning citizens that we've taught have started businesses. In fact, one gentleman in Charlottesville just got in touch with us and he's running a contracting business. From what we know now, there have only been two people that have recidivated and neither of those was for an additional infraction. And this is out of almost 300 yeah. students. That's correct. So the question now is how can we continue to be experts at providing education and where can we provide it? Can we provide it at a juvenile facility? Can we provide right. it in a, in a federal facility or even in other states and other universities? Whether I'm involved in the Darden program or just in education in any facet, it will keep me grounded. It'll keep me focused on concentrating on things that are beneficial to life as opposed to the things that just bring pleasure to life, like drinking. I want to run a food truck. Um, actually, maybe three or four food trucks. <laughs> People that know me, my friends, when I cook for them, they tell me I should be selling this stuff. So it was a, it was a fit for me. Darden helped me to broaden my mind because you have so many different opinions and you have to learn how to speak in front of people. You have to learn how to defend your answers without getting angry. I, I'm, I'm very blessed. And that's the way I look at Greg and Tierney. I believe they're angels walking this earth and they're two of them. So you'll do the whole split the room, bring them together, make them negotiate and then debrief. There is an appendix in the back and Kim has given notes on how to do the types of problems and the types of concepts we're emphasizing. So you want to make sure that people know about that and they know about the formula sheet and they can use their calculators on tests. The only time people can't work together is when they're taking a test. Okay? That's really the only thing. <laughs>